three things that, that, that were really a shift for me. Um, in, in July of 2001, um, we, my last album, which was out on Universal, came out. There's a song called Sunny Side Up. It's um, on my, my the last record. is simply called Freddy Ravel. And Sunny Side Up went to number one in July of 2001, went to number one in the United States in a, in a format called New Adult Contemporary, which is the same genre that you would hear Sade and Sting and artists like that in. So it was really... Uh, it was really something, you know, as a, from from a, from an artist's point of view. If you record music and make music, it's it was sort of like climbing Mount Everest and planting your flag at the top. You know, it was a big deal to get that to happen. And um, uh, I, at the time, was in Tunisia when it happened, uh, performing with Al Jarreau, uh playing in front of a couple thousand uh, uh, people that were happened to be in a Muslim community. 10 miles from the order, uh, border of Algeria. And um, I was in the middle of playing Take Five, you know, that song by, by uh, Paul Desmond. Many people say Dave Brubeck, but it really is Paul Desmond, the sax player. You know, and I'm playing this. Yeah. We're digging into this amazing piece of music with Al Jarreau, who, who does Take Five like nobody else can do Take Five. And about two minutes into the groove, I open up my eyes, and I see a couple thousand folks who happen to be Muslims standing up, most of them in traditional robe, with their eyes closed and their hands out uh, and their palms exposed as though they were just receiving and drinking in the music. And if, if everyone out there can just sort of imagine, just kind of close your eyes and imagine, here we are, in a very, you know, Muslim country, people are holding out their hands, hearing America's only true art form, jazz music, and mm -hmm. drinking it up like it's the nectar of the gods. And as I opened my eyes and I looked at their eyes, they had so much love in their eyes. They were, they looked at us like, please come to my home and have dinner with us, you know? <laughs> it, was, it was a profound feeling of love and connection playing Take Five, you know? Mm -hmm. And that left an indelible impression on me. I never forgot that. And then, two months later, I come home, back to Los Angeles, and bang, 9-11. Um, mm -hmm. And this was all at the same time that my record had hit number one. And it was a combination of that experience, kind of getting that, that thing off of, getting that number one thing out of my consciousness, because sometimes that's all you work on when you're in music. Getting that out of the way, I realized I needed to do something bigger. And what was finally the clincher was in December 2001. Uh, my wife, uh, I had come back from South Africa, had, had done a big, a big performance over there. The number one headline in all the South African papers had nothing at all to do with 9-11. It all had to do with AIDS, because one out of eight people in South Africa at the time uh, were, were victims of AIDS. And it was just sort of the layering of this, and then landing back in L.A. with my wife greeting me with her pregnancy test kit and saying, Honey, guess what? <laughs> You're going to be a dad. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just realizing we were going to have, you know, that I was gonna, about to be a father in a world that had gone dark, uh, it was a con it was, that was really the back background that led to Tune Up to Success, and I... I just wanted to say that those were, you know, it's, it's, it was cumulative reasons that, that really led me to kind of pull myself away from the, the beautiful seduction of playing music all around the world with wonderful people. It's a, it's a very fulfilling thing and a very fun thing to do. But um, I had done enough of it, and it was, I'd reached a point where I need to take all that and put it into something that turns into a methodology that can help people. And I realized that if we can teach the world how to listen in a new way, not just to music, but to how they listen to one another. Basically teach namaste consciousness, okay? The light in me recognizes and honors the light in you. If we could do that through music, then we would actually be taking music as a device to teach people how to become better people. And if we could take it even farther where they become better personally, but also become better professionally, and we could apply the art of listening to the way you talk to your boss or your bo or the way you talk to your fellow employees or 
the way you work together in a team to obtain certain results, then we would actually be empowering the planet and causing people to listen on a whole new level. And mm -hmm. that, uh, Kristen, that's what led to Tune Up to Success, was my desire to basically teach Namaste consciousness in such a way that it would empower people personally and professionally. Hmm. Beautiful. I love that. I love how you created that. And I just, you know, it's just so great having these extraordinary people on this show. And the, I had a, an interview prior to our interview today, Luann Mitchell, who was an extraordinary human being, very accomplished, been through a lot of life challenges. And what she said is, uh, as, as every challenge passed, it was, this too shall prepare me. And I hear a similar message in what you're saying, all these experiences, and you wouldn't have known. You wouldn't have necessarily designed it this way, and it just one thing evolved into the next, and then you being who you are, which is obviously an incredible human being with a desire to continue to expand yourself and to make a difference in the world, kept saying, okay, what, what now? What else can I do? And I just I think that's beautiful. And it really is what we're, we're about here on Real Coaching Radio. And, uh, and so I love hearing that story. So and I want to hear more about what, what exactly is Tune In, Tune In to Success. Okay, uh, okay, yes. Yeah. It's actually Tune Up to Success. Tune Up to Success. And, right, uh, tune up. Although, although, although um, it's also not wrong to say Tune In. To, I mean, it really is called Tune Up, but Tuning In is also part of it. So, so you're right, yes. Kristen. <laughs> it's a good thing. Oh, good, because I would like to have another, yes, another aspect of it. But <laughs> tune in as well. Mm -hmm. And I love this. I mean, one thing I've, I, I, you know, Kristen, one thing I've learned about you is, is, you know, that challenge that you put out to all of us, you know, to stop waiting and looking outside ourselves for the answers and start being, you know, as you call it, a fierce disruption is something um, that is a big part of, of what, uh, you know, what I feel aligns you and I so beautifully. 